So I first started thinking about ecology seriously at the start of 2020. Um, I decided to take a year out from my career as a scientist and travel for a year, uh, try and become a bit less burnt out, have some fun and kind of recover from quite an intense PhD. Uh, and I ended up getting a month in, in New Zealand, which was really nice. And they had an amazing attitude to the wildlife there. They had a great sense of stewardship and they, there was a sense that kind of they were very engaged. The average New Zealander knew a lot about ecology and about the animals they had, the natives and the invasive species and how to deal with those invasive species. And the government as a whole, there was a sense that actually the Department of Conservation there was really kind of a primary feature of New Zealand life and given a lot of importance. And I started thinking, actually, I'd love to come back to England and kind of make England a bit more like New Zealand. And how do you do that? It would be kind of as an ecologist. So I started thinking, well, this might be an interesting career path to pursue. And then my trip was brought to a very unceremonious end by COVID-19. So I ended up isolating and sheltering in place for about a year. And I had a lot of free time and, a lot of, you know, had to work out what to do next. So I ended up signing up to a lot of online ecology courses. And in fact, I ended up doing an online ecology master's with Oxford University. And that had a lot, obviously, of academic background about ecology and a lot of practical skills too. So I started thinking about how to work, build up this experience and get into ecology properly. Uh, first off, I kind of reviewed my CV and looked at what I had that would actually be relevant. So while I was first getting into science, I came from a, a background in zoology. So I had, you know, some relevant experience in my undergraduate degree and I'd completed a few small projects part of that. So I worked with a plant sciences lab, uh, working with bees and pollinating and looking at germination rates, uh, which I, you know, I felt that was quite relevant and a good thing to include in my CV. Uh, and I'd done a project on trilobites with the uh, geology department in Cambridge. And that was all kind of taxonomy experience, uh, which again, you know, it's tangential, but I felt it was quite, it was useful uh, for an ecology career. But I felt I was still quite lacking in the actual applied skills. And also I wanted to refresh my academic background after a year out. So the first thing I did is I signed up to uh, a PG cert, which is a postgraduate certificate in ecological surveying with Oxford University. And this is a one year part-time course that you could do online. And there was some talk components in person as well, like a field survey in the wonderful Whiteham Woods, which is a beautiful, really well studied uh, kind of living laboratory wood in Oxford. That's one of the most heavily surveyed areas in the world. They've got a wonderful badger set there and populations of birds that have been studied for hundreds of years. And unfortunately, because of COVID-19, the talk components in person never manifested. Uh, but I was able to meet some people who were interested in ecology. And there was, you know, 20 hours of teaching online or so a week. Uh, which I found really helpful. As I did the course, it, I realised it was very kind of international and it was very academically focused. So there was a lot of reading academic papers and research, which was actually the kind of area I, I was most comfortable with already. And the problem with ecology is that every country has its own na natural flora and fauna, its own creatures. You know, uh, a hedgehog in Britain is a great species that we want to nurture and care of. In New Zealand, it's an invasive pest that needs to be dealt with. So I realised that actually I was, you know, learning really fascinating examples about kind of bison and wildebeest uh, in Asia or in America, but that wasn't actually relevant for working in the UK as an ecologist. So I started looking for a course that maybe was a bit more specialised and a bit more focused in actual kind of career skills and doing the surveys rather than the academic background. Um, so I found a course called Ecology Training UK that was based in Exeter, very near where I was living at the time. And I signed up for that in addition. So I took on the Ecology Training UK, which is also equivalent to a master's at the same time I was doing another master's degree equivalent course, uh, which was quite a lot. And then later obviously added the full time job onto it, which has been an interesting challenge. Um, but the Ecology Training UK course was really useful because it was a lot more focused on actual in the field career skills. So doing a phase one habitat survey, doing a preliminary roost assessment, uh, doing a dust survey for bats, the kind of the equipment you need uh, and actually because that was in person and because the pandemic at that point was easing up a bit, I was actually able to go on site and do some practice with these techniques and these courses. And we were all added into a WhatsApp group and lots of people were sharing ways to get involved in experience, you know, sites you could go on to, free courses, people looking for helpers on site for a little bit of ecology experience. Uh, so I started looking at a couple of those, sent off like one or two applications to jobs I saw, but wasn't taking them very seriously because I was doing all of this online teaching at the same time, so I didn't actually have that much free time. Uh, but what I decided is that I was really interested in bats and that was what I was told was that, uh, you know, the bats are the, kind of the bread and butter of ecology work in the UK. If you can get a bat license and bat experience, that will really help your chances of becoming an ecologist and getting involved in those kind of, that kind of work. So I thought I'd look at getting a bat license. So I needed 
hours on site working with bats, following more experienced surveyors around. And what a lot of people do then is they become a subcontractor for a larger ecology company going out and doing the dusk and dawn surveys, but they need a lot of manpower at quite antisocial hours. Um, and you can do that without needing a bat license, provided you've got a bit of training and a bat detector. So I wanted to look into becoming a part-time surveyor whilst I was doing the rest of my courses. And I joined uh, an ecology group, a kind of early careers ecology group of people on the same course as me, this Ecology Training UK course. And often people were sharing job interviews or uh, applications and opportunities that they themselves had applied to or that they'd seen but they weren't in the right area for. And uh, one of my friends, Julia, had seen this Arbtech opportunity for subcontractors. Uh, and this would be a part-time job coming out and helping in the evenings and in the dawn surveys for the bat surveys. At the time I was looking at doing more bat work and getting a bit more experience. And my assumption really is that I'd, I might do that for a season, so for the summer survey season uh, this year, in order to get a year of experience as a part-timer, subcontractor, before I then tried to become a junior ecologist or a junior surveyor uh, in a more serious job. So this looked perfect for me, the level of experience I had. So I put together my CV and a covering letter and sent it off to Arbtech. And at that point I didn't really have my hopes very high because I'd sent off one or two applications before that and I'd talked to other people in the similar positions. And it really seemed to be, you know, you send out a hundred applications and you get one or two back. Um, but I thought it was a good start. And it turns out the day I submitted it on was April Fool's Day, which probably wasn't a good day to submit an application uh, to have it taken seriously by the HD team. Uh, but Rob saw it, had a little debate about whether it was uh, an April Fool's Day joke or not, because um, apparently he did like my CV. Um, and he gave me a ring the next day and uh, put me through an interview process instantly and talked me through the kind of the steps of joining Arbtech. And we, I think we hit it off and we had some really interesting conversations. And he said that actually they'd be quite interested in taking on someone as a junior ecologist rather than just as a, a part-time subcontractor. And it was a bit of a gamble because I didn't have that much in the field experience, but I had this academic background that I think he quite wanted for the company. Um, and so I think he was sort of gambling on the fact that I'd be a prospect and that I'd be able to skill up rapidly. And Arbtech was willing to help fund me get the rest of my training done and to take me out in the field so I could shadow and survey with other ecologists. Um, so for me, I was absolutely over the moon. Like This was exactly the perfect thing for the career stage I was at and what I would need to kind of advance to the next level. Uh, and especially as I'd applied for a subcontractor job, uh, originally it was kind of, you know, you apply for something and then you get a much better offer, which was, had me absolutely thrilled. Uh, and I was very lucky to receive that offer. Um, and I was a bit nervous, obviously, because I was worried that um, Rob thought I was much better <laughs> at my job than I would turn out to be. Um, but I hope that I've met the expectations that I set kind of joining the company. Um, and it's been very good so far. Yeah. So one thing I realised quite rapidly and was told by contacts I had in the ecology industry was that there is a surprising amount that is word of mouth. Um, so unlike a career path where you can kind of build up a perfect CV and apply through formal processes, there seems to be quite a lot of kind of word of mouth and reputational stakes in ecology, partially because it's quite such a small field really, um, and because it's a passion field. So a lot of people who are interested in ecology and are doing a lot of the, the kind of maintenance projects are volunteers. They're people who really love bats and they're doing, you know, they're joining their local bat group or they love their local wildlife park, so they're working there. And then there are, you know, there are the ecological consultants working for it professionally, but like there seems to be a kind of a tier where actually your enthusiasm and your passion is the important thing. And that's communicated by kind of more senior people in the industry who will meet you and understand that about you. So I think actually the best way to break in and kind of get experience is to do some volunteering, um, to turn up to bat surveys, to kind of Great Crested Newt surveys that are being run by the Wildlife Trust, the charities, um, and just to put in the hours and gain the experience that way. Um, and once you've been able to do that, people will see that you actually have the passion, that you have the knowledge. And then when they are looking for actual jobs in the industry, you'll have a much better chance of getting in there. So I think I had quite an unusual entry into ecology because I had this quite heavy and strong academic background and I already had a lot of the kind of research techniques down that would be involved in academic ecology work but I didn't have the experience and the kind of the practical out in the field work and the volunteering work so often people I meet who are at the same, sta same stage as me getting into ecology have already done some volunteering work for two or three years and that seems to be a much more common route 
Um, so someone like me coming from an academic background, I'd advise getting those hours in and kind of working and uh, volunteering with some of the local bat groups or other ecology groups, you know, looking at badgers or great crested newts and just racking the hours up to get involved. And I went out and I joined the Devon Bat Group and a subsidiary group of that, the Devon Bat Conservation Trust. And these groups were running surveys all around Devon, often at night doing transect surveys and also harp trapping where they put up nets and harp traps to catch the bats, ring them and then release them and track them around the countryside. And in particular in Devon this is really interesting because we have some of the last populations of grey long-eared bats, Britain's rarest bat, so a lot of the research I was particularly involved in was looking at those. Um, so I went out at night with these groups, did volunteering, helped them set up, helped them monitor it, uh, driving around the countryside at very late hours. And the groups were really amazing, so people would take me aside, they'd show me how to use the bat detectors, show me how to do the equipment, and advise me out of their own personal experience how to get into ecology, how to get more work in the kind of areas I was involved in. And they were amazing at just um, showing me the crucial first steps, so it was a really good experience. But then someone who was coming with a less academic background, I'd recommend doing one of the courses that I've done. So like an ecology surveying course with Oxford University, or I found Ecology Training UK has been really good at kind of getting those practical skills and the academic background that you need in some quite easy to do online courses and, and taught components. Um, so I'd recommend both of those. They've been a really, you meet a really amazing community of people through them, people in very similar experiences to you, and those people will share contacts and opportunities. So they'll say to you, you know, oh, this job is outside my area, but you know, here's the post, why don't you apply for it? And that's exactly how I got involved in ecology. So it might be a slightly different time scale for someone else getting involved. Uh, with a slightly different background from me, you might need a few extra years of volunteering work. And I think if you're looking at getting a bat license, you probably would need one or two years of subcontracting to rack up kind of towards 200 hours or so before then trying to get your first license. But all you need to get involved in that kind of subcontracting work is a little bit of bad experience as voluntary work and a bat detector and a company like Arctech that's willing to take you out, train you up on shadowing some surveys, and then you can start literally getting paid for doing those surveys whilst getting the experience you need to do ecology work full time. I had about a month between my interview with Rob and my acceptance of the job and the start date. In this time period, I set up my company LinkedIn. I got very active in talking to other ecologists and starting to kind of establish myself in my career. Everyone would have their specialist channels for their field of like arboriculture or ecology. And they'd be throwing around jargon and acronyms that I just had absolutely no idea what was going on. BERS, LERCs, HVCs. And you know, it was business terms that I didn't really have that background because I spent my time doing academia or it would be specific ecology or arboriculture terms. 